Hello everybody, this is Bronco Juggalo. And Bill. And today we are doing, from 1982, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Khan! Khan! Shatner did it better. Directed by Nicholas Myers, starring all the original Star Trek, the original series cast, as well as Ricardo Montalban as Khan! What? I like saying that. You gotta keep saying it. And starring Kirstie Alley as Savak. Or Savak or Savak. I don't know. I've heard it said like four different ways. Who knows? Savak, I'm pretty sure is what it is. Yeah, Kirstie Alley's hot. She's hot. Yeah, where she was back in the day. Genetically engineered tyrant. Con! And his band of misfits. Steal a starship and enact his revenge upon Captain James T. P. Kirk. Now, not only is this a direct sequel to the motion picture, Star yes. Trek motion picture, it's also a direct sequel to the episode Space Seed from 1967, which was an episode of the original series. Now, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, was actually removed from any and all creative decisions in this movie because the studios blamed the response from the first film squarely upon him. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a lot of people's faults. But Probably. Yeah, he had a hand in it. The movie was originally titled The Revenge of Khan! But, as we all know, we had Revenge of the Jedi, which then changed its name to Return of the Jedi. Ironically, Revenge of the Jedi was going to be, they didn't want it to compete with Star Wars. So they changed the name, and then they ironically changed the name of that movie. Yeah. So. Now this had a $12 million budget, and it brought in $97 million. Not bad. Now, even though it brought in less than its predecessor, it did make more money because of the lower budget. Yes. Leonard Nimoy received death threats over the death of Spock before the movie ever even came out. Yeah. The, the, the script yeah. was leaked that Spock was going to die. People started writing the studio in mass. People made videos. Some guy even rented TV time to get to, you know, the studios, to reach the studios to make sure that they did not kill off Spock. And I thought people these yeah. days were bad with the petitions and the bullshit and all the whining. No, they're crying. just, they're, it's still the same. The media has just changed. That's all, that's all. The, the platform upon which it's done has just changed. But it's I mean, still there. he literally received death threats. That's fucked up. It's not like he wrote the movie. No, but still, no. that's the way people are. That's just the way people are, man. Well, I didn't have any cons for this film. How about you? No pun intended. That Con! Is... That is so bad. So bad. Funny though. No, it wasn't. No. Uh, my only con is. Con! That bad joke. No. Oh. No, I have no cons for Con! this movie. I'm actually not basing it off of James T. Kirk's version. I'm basing it off the fat guy from Fanboys when he's laying down and he's got the statue of Khan's head in his hand. And he goes, Khan! I had to take a thing of his inhaler. That's yes. So I love that. No, there are no cons for this movie because we actually got something good. We got action. There were things happening in this movie. That brings me to my first point is I love the plot. I love that we actually got some action. Yes, there's and something going on. It was such a step up from the last film. No shit. Like Ugh. a huge step up. Like this is like Citizen Kane compared to like Jaws the Revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, this movie was done way better. It had a lower budget, too. It, it still looks amazing. 
It's still visually amazing for the time. Mm -hmm. And now we actually have a plot. There is a plot going on. We don't have just a stupid fucking cloud. Yeah. Was it this one or the next one that I read that was the first true CGI film? Was this one or part three? I don't remember. Uh, it might be part three. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. I can't remember. Yeah, but I mean, they did a lot better with everything in this movie. They kept it, the pace going. They kept yes. it moving. It didn't just plod along like the last one. Oh, uh, like when is it over? No, this movie will actually keep you entertained. Um, one of the things I really loved about this movie was the dialogue, especially right. the dialogue of Khan. That dialogue was too funny. You're stupid, dude. I know. You're stupid. Uh, a lot of his dialogue came out of like literature. It did, and uh, some of it came straight from Moby Dick, which, as you mentioned, Drew, yes. you thought it was comparing. And I never really thought of it that way. That compare this to Moby Dick. But I guess it yes. was actually a direct comparison made uh, by the filmmakers that he even quotes, you know, the quotes from Moby Dick at the end of the movie. Yes, so, and you have a book of Moby Dick in, in the, movie. the yeah. movie inside where they were living on this yeah. planet. And my favorite my favorite line, though, of his was where he says, he tests me. He tests me so. You know, I just love that. I thought that was cool. Yes. <laughs> This is actually the biggest pro for me of this film is that it was the Moby Dick story. Only Captain Ahab is Khan and Kirk is the white whale. That's the only difference here. But his obsession with this revenge that he thinks he's due just ultimately destroys him, his crew, everything, just like Moby Dick. I really enjoyed the dynamic between Spock and McCoy. It brings back to the original series. There's a lot of really good dialogue between the two. Yes. Uh, which continues on in the next film. But I just really enjoyed it because it was just it was just refreshing. It was refreshing to see after the dreariness of the first film, you know, to see some fun in the script. And that was cool. And nice. a lot yes. of that is introduced in the in the in the in this movie, the relationship between Kirk and Spock is actually more serious, whereas it's McCoy and Spock that have the more bantery kind of relationship. Yeah, and I did enjoy that. Yes, that is a nice point of this film. All right, huge pro for me is the death of Spock. It was a well done scene. This was an amazing scene. A lot of great quotes there, like "I have always been and always will be." Your friend. Yeah. The, and it's just an amazing scene and very powerful scene. I can, you know, I can see why people would be upset with this decision, but after you see it, like I could just imagine yeah. being upset, but then seeing the scene going, wow, that was really, really damn fucking good. And Spock's death scene's on my list as well. Probably one of the more powerful deaths in cinema. And definitely one of the most recognizable. Yes. Um, it was some powerful stuff, watching Spock sacrifice himself. And the interaction between him and Kirk just kind of capped it all off. And just to follow along with that, uh, Kirk's eulogy that he gives. You know, another thing full of great dialogue. Another really recognizable line where his soul was the most. You know, and it was just uh, some really good stuff. I mean, really good stuff. It was very well written, very well written film. It is. I really enjoyed the effects of the movie. For the time, yeah. they were decent, oh, yeah. really good effects. Yes. And it's no surprise that they were done by ILM Studios. Yeah. I mean, you know, ILM did the effect. Once Star Wars hit, man, they those were the up. guys. Those were the guys to go yep. for great effects. Yep, they blew up big time. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember, it's. The time period. These are amazing effects for this time period. Very good. And even to this day, it's enjoyable to watch. Oh, I just got one more thing to touch on. I do like the fact that we do get to see the Kirk's son. He has a son. Yeah. Did we know this before this movie? I'm not sure. I don't I'm not remember. a big Trekkie guy. I didn't watch the original 
series very much. Yeah. Like, you know, I caught an episode here when I was younger, but... Yeah, that was about it for really me, too. It, really. Yeah, it, but they, their dynamic between each other, he can't stand his father. He can't stand him. He hates his guts. The fact that, well, he doesn't know it's his father either until most way through the film. Yeah, but he still oh. hates him. And, but they eventually, he eventually grew to respect his father. Yeah. Ain't that just the way. Well, guys, this was a fun one. We enjoyed yes, it. Yes, this is a great movie. We had fun with this entry. Probably going to rank pretty up well up there when we come to do the ranking. Yep, that'll be a while coming, though. So, guys, this is it for this film. We'll be back next time with part three of Search for Spock. In the meantime, I just want to leave you with... Con! Oh, I wanted to just do that so much harder. Yeah, I'm coming from the guy the other day that kept going... Attack of the Killer Tomatoes! At least I have the voice for it. You yeah, don't. Whatever. Yours Please. just sounds like a llama trying to give birth through its mouth. That's okay. Peace. And Bill saying goodnight.